And at the end of 20 seconds, you have to guess if I'm looking at your photo, yes or no. Right. And as soon as you've done that, you click on it. If you want to have feedback, you can have instant feedback, which will tell you if you're right or wrong. If you don't want it, you can choose not to have it, if you prefer not to know. Then it does it again. So there's a series of these tests, and the question is, can people score above chance? And they do at the moment. They, people, are, It's running above chance. People seem to know when someone else is looking at their photo. It's a way of focusing attention on that per person. I mean, this is a very artificial experiment, of course, but it's terribly simple to do, and it's fun to do, and anyone can do this anywhere in the world through the Internet. Because you also have a, a book, The Sense of Being Stared At, which I guess is a similar principle. Yes. That's, um, that deals with research on telepathy and the sense of being stared at. You see, I think our minds are extended even in ordinary vision. When we look at something, our minds are connected to what we're looking at. Um, it's not just all inside the head. Um, and because our minds are connected to what we're looking at, it means we can affect what we're looking at. So if we're looking at another person from behind and they don't know we're there, they might be able to feel when they're being looked at. Um, and that is something that a lot of people have noticed, the feeling of being stared at. You just turn round, you don't quite know why, you might feel slightly uneasy, you turn round, there's someone looking at you. Or you can stare at someone and make them turn round. Most people have had this experience. And I've done lots of experiments on this that show that it's a real phenomenon. Um, the experiments are really simple. Um, they're so simple a child can do them, and thousands of children already have. Um, I summarise this research in, in my book. And I also, also have an online experiment that anyone can do at home with another person. Uh, how it works is that uh, one person sits with their back to the other wearing a blindfold. Usually the airline blindfold uh, is, is the best and easiest kind. Um, then in a random series of trials, one person stares at the back of the neck of the subject or looks away and thinks of something else. And there's a beep, so you know when the trial begins. Uh, can you tell when you're being stared at compared with when you're not? Right. And on average, people can. They're, they're right better than chance. It's, again, it's a very artificial experiment. It's not a huge effect, but in the looking trials, it's about 60% compared with 50% mm. by chance. So this means that there's um, a repeatable effect. Some people are much better at it than others, but this is just an average of everybody. Um, a repeatable effect that shows there is a sense of being stared at. That when you look at somebody else, when you focus your attention on somebody, it affects them. And this uh, even affects people's physiology. Some people have done experiments that have shown that if you measure the skin resistance, electrodes on the fingers, like in a lie detector, um, people's emotional arousal changes when they're being stared at, even if they're being looked at on closed circuit television by somebody in another room. Um, the focusing of someone's attention on them affects their physiology, even if they're not conscious of it. So we're interconnected through attention and intention, as in the telephone telepathy tests. So our minds are not just in our brains, but stretch out through attention and through intention. It's just reminding you, me when you said that, that there's something I read in one of your books, which and I had to read this two or three times to really get what our mind does is, well, like, like I look at you, mm. I, I, I then form an image of you in my mind, then I project that image to, to precisely where you're sitting. So it's not a hallucination as such. I'm not projecting it over there. I'm projecting it back to where you're sitting. Yes. That normally, you, you, the, the image you form is projected. It's not so much that you form it in the brain, then project it out. It's, it's formed as a projection in the first place. OK. But it's a projection. And normally, it goes to where the light's coming from. Now, in some cases, it, because the projection is virtual, it's, it's made of thought, as it were, as opposed to matter... Um, it's not blocked by material objects. And that's why if you look at something in a mirror, uh, the light is bent by the mirror and comes to your eye, but when you project it, it goes straight on when it hits the mirror and the image appears behind the mirror. That's mm -hmm. why when you look at your face in the mirror when you're shaving in the morning, uh, the image is behind the glass. Um, it's the, you, the projection goes straight on 
um, whereas the light is bent by the mirror, reflected by it. And so the mirror images are, are the simplest way everyone actually experiences these projections um, as virtual images, um, which are, are projections. They're not, it's not just the light. If vision was just light, um, it wouldn't have this property. And the idea that the image you see in a mirror is a projection of your mind, is this is not my idea, it's a very old idea. It was, in fact, first thought up by Euclid, the great Greek geometer. Um, and um, it's still the theory of virtual images that you find in physics textbooks today. It's, and it's a really good example of the projective power of the mind.